Okay, so I don't exactly have a full plan, but I have an idea of what we're doing. My client tomorrow night has asked for a goth butterfly with maybe a skeleton on one side, a butterfly on the other, or kind of spooky, creepy. So I have some inspiration photos that I've looked at, but not a complete photo. So we're gonna wing it a little bit and play around. And as I paint myself, I'm gonna give you guys uh, some tips and tricks as well as just give you a life update. So let's get started. Feel free to grab some paint and paint along with me if you'd like. All right, so it has been so long since I have painted my face on camera, like forever. Um, I'm gonna start with Summer Days, one of my favorite one strokes and a little petal sponge. And I'm actually gonna use this in the one stroke. I don't do this on the job, but for this particular design, because I want these colors and I don't want it to go too far out, I am gonna pick up all of those sunset-y colors with just the tiniest bit of turquoise on the outer edge. I need a spray bottle. And I'm gonna start there for the inside part of the butterfly. And then the outer part of the butterfly is gonna be more of a, a turquoise split cake. So while I do that, let's chat. Um, it has been a while since I have painted my face on YouTube or really talked to you guys. I have done some videos over the last couple years, mainly on my like practice boards, and um, tried to show you guys some really quick, easy designs, some holiday designs, that kind of stuff. But I just have not been on camera very much. So a lot of that just has to do with the fact that finding time to paint yourself, you know, film, edit, all that stuff, it's a huge commitment and a lot of work and I love it, but at the same time, the last couple years have just been heavy and a lot. I uh, went through a divorce, I switched jobs, and still in the same career. If you guys don't know, I actually work in the technology business full time and I love doing that. Um, so face painting is not my only income, nor is it my primary job and income. So between um, getting a divorce and switching to a new company, I have just been really, really busy. So I have not had time to film a ton, um, but things are starting to kind of even out and slow down. So I'm hoping to get back into it a little bit more. Okay, so I like that, that's pretty. Um, while it's still a little bit wet, I'm going to dip my finger into this Mama Clown glitter and just put glitter on my eye so that it's nice and sparkly. This is my favorite clear white glitter. It is just amazing. So, so anyways, I've just been focusing on life and not beating myself up for not being able to create a ton of content. Um, trying to keep up on comments and I still get messages from you guys all the time and I love it and I do try to respond. I think most of you who have instant messaged me or talked to me outside of this platform um, hopefully know that I really try to respond to everyone that I can. Um, because I love YouTube and it means a lot to me and I love this community. But when things happen and life gets in the way, it's, it's much more important. It's bigger than just making videos. So I had to take a little bit of a step back and get back into a flow of things where I feel like I can make content for you guys and it can be worth it. So I actually have a bunch of videos in my head. Um, grab a brush. There's a bunch of topics. Uh, quick tips and things that I think would be really, really helpful for everyone. So I will make a concerted effort to start making videos again. 
And as always, if you guys have suggestions or you have requests, leave it down below. Let me know what you guys want to see. It's been a while since I've asked that. So this is a uh, homemade split, dark, um, jet black, turquoise, neon green, and then a very light, soft sea foam green. So I'm just gonna load up a three, no, it's a five eighth, not three quarter. It's a short five eighth angle brush with this and do some outlining of this butterfly eye. So I'm just gonna drag the toe of that brush down right through the eyebrow, always kind of keeping in mind center points so like this is a focal point, this is a focal point, so make sure your lines are going towards the center of the face or ending towards the center of the face. Um, that's one thing I could probably update is my one stroke butterfly video. I did one years ago, kind of like a slow walk through slash like help video. And if you guys would like an updated new one, let me know. So I'm just going to create segments of the butterfly and I drag the toe, the dark part of the brush, through to create those segments. And I'm going to load again because I want a really crisp line here and crisp stroke. All right, so there's the top part of the butterfly. Now we're gonna do the bottom. So again, if you guys don't know, um, I do get the question all the time if I'm a full-time face painter, and one of the things people ask me is, can I be a full-time face painter? So I get that question all the time, and my answer is always, well, sure, you can be. But I do believe that it depends on your income needs and I think it can help depending on like what area you're in. I am in Iowa, so I'm in the Midwest. Um, like after Halloween, our business dries up for the most part. Not completely, but it gets pretty quiet. So unless you have like an event gig you do every week at like, you know, some establishment or something, like it can be pretty dismal during the winter. Uh, so to me, you know, it's not feasible for me to face paint full time because I can't sustain myself. But that does not mean that you or somebody else can't be a full time face painter. Okay, so I think what I want to do, I'm going to drag a few more little segments through here. Um, I also love my day job, so that makes a huge difference. You know, I don't dislike what I do. I actually quite enjoy it, uh, and I don't want to stop doing it. Okay, so I'm going to do something kind of different here. I'm actually going to mirror the stroke and pull it up and down because I want that to be a little bit higher. And then I think I'm going to just fill in with this green. And pull that down. It does not help that I'm going down into my eyebrow. I really want to go the other way. So I'm going to sweep up. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of that bright green. And then I'm going to take this toe. I'm going to start kind of up here instead of down here. And I'm going to drag it. And then I'm going to plop down to create a little bit of a dropped, I don't know, antenna wing thing. I don't know what the heck that is. But there we go. It looks pretty cool. I don't usually do this stroke, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I think once I do the skeleton 
dark and add some drama to it, I think it's gonna work, so bear with me. All right, so I grabbed some gold and some white. I'm gonna do the teeth of my skeleton, and I'm gonna use this petal brush to do it, to help me out, so. Yeah, so I think the answer is, of course, you can be a full-time face painter, but it, it depends on what your expectations are. I know, I know that face painters that live in warmer climates have an easier time making a, a fuller income because they're painting year-round. You know, if you can get a gig at, like, the zoo or the local science center where you are painting every day during the week, that makes a huge difference. So I have a lot of friends who are full-time face painters. This is a great way to make teeth, by the way. Um, a lot of them, I will say, tend to diversify a little bit beyond just doing gigs, which also can help subsidize your income. So I'm just using this as like a stamp and moving it around. I don't want it to be perfectly straight, so I'm kind of tilting them every now and then. Do not forget to turn your brush the opposite way because there's paint on the other side. And just stamp on some teeth. Works pretty well. And then I'm gonna flip it and do the same thing. Yeah, a lot of my friends that are full-time face painters also have glitter businesses, they train, they do other fine art ventures. So I would say go into it uh, being smart. Make sure you know your region, your area, that you have some established clients, and that you can support yourself. You know, everything's about informed decisions. Alright, here are our skeleton teeth. I am going to grab my black star blends and let's do the inside of the skeleton eye. So I'm wondering, do you guys use star blends? I love my star blends and if you don't know what it is, it's really just powdered makeup. It's like a giant black eyeshadow. That's what star blends is. And they come in multiple colors. I use the white and the black the most. And I love using them on the job. I have quite a few videos about star blends. You can use star blends with water just like uh, you can with eyeshadows. Um, I remember, God, in the 90s when that was like a big trend when I was younger, you would always see magazines recommending you wet your makeup brushes and dip them into your eyeshadows to have like any color eyeliner that you wanted. And if you ever did that, you then realized, like, you ruined your eyeshadow by turning it into eyeliner. So even though Mehron does say that you can do that, if you're going to do that, I would probably just use, like, one side wet and then keep the other side dry so that you don't mess up the makeup. Because I remember when I used to wet my eyeshadows down and turn them into eyeliner, the eyeshadow was never the same. Like, it compacted down, kind of, with the moisture. I don't know. If you guys use your star blends with water, let me know what you think. I see that question, like, pop up on forums every now and then. Like, should you use your star blends with water or not, and I think it's kind of up to you, you know? Um, so I think I'm going to also carve out my jawline with star blends. I love using star blends in the summertime when it's hot because it wears very differently. And then I also like it for things like this, like a more elevated makeup look because 
it's softer and a little bit more manipulative. You can kind of mess with it a bit more. You can also make it like the black look more grayed out or you can build it up with more coverage. So I like the diversity of star blends and I'm gonna go through the jawline here a little bit if I can without totally messing up my teeth. But it's okay if they get a little messed up because this is supposed to be spooky. So if they do, it's just gonna get shadowed and I can always layer and go over them. So I also get the question a lot from people if I'm done making videos and if I'm going to abandon my channel and that kind of stuff and how sad it is when YouTubers abandon their channel and and I will say like I have no intention of abandoning my YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube means a lot to me. I love editing videos. I love filming. So I have no intention of like disappearing and never making videos for you guys. I just had a couple years there where I had other things I needed to focus on and YouTube had to take a bit of a back seat. So hopefully this year, this coming fall and into the new year, I can refocus myself and make sure to get you guys some good content and answer your questions and all the stuff. I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow on my lash line here. I'm going to go in with paint on that side too to intensify this black, but I'm just going to contour a little bit more. I think I'm going to make a crack up here, so I want a little bit of shadow behind it. And the other side's dry and with no uh, pigment, so I'm just gonna blend it out because I don't want it to be too intense. But it's a really great way to layer. Um, I love star blends with uh, stencils too. I think they're, it's like a brilliant thing to use because if you use stencils on the job, you know like what a pain it is and can be to stencil on the job. And Star Blends allows you to get like really great detail and like really fast. You don't tend to mess up as much. It doesn't bleed. Do my nose as well here. Make it look kind of hollowed out. All right, that's a good start. All right, so I rinsed out that same petal brush. I'm gonna go into just my white and I'm gonna so that so I dabbed this side off on a towel and then I'm going to stamp over and I get this very dry brushed layered look oh hopefully the camera's picking that up Do kind of a 
half. Smaller tooth. The very end. I also, when I do Halloween makeup on myself or clients, and when I'm doing skulls and I know they're gonna be out and about all night, I try not to go completely over the lips. So if this was a full face skull, I would probably just take the teeth right here and here on the client and then I would leave their lips lipstick because over the night of eating and drinking, it's gonna wear really, really badly and not well. So whenever you're doing makeup for clients that are going out on the town, try to be conscious of how it's gonna wear. I do try to use star blends or waterproof makeup whenever I can. That way I know that, you know, two hours into the party, their makeup isn't melting off their face and they're already disappointed and they didn't get their money's worth. So keep that in mind. All right, so now I'm gonna take a really thin brush. This is a, ooh, is there a, I don't think there is a number on it, but it's the Face Painting Shop liner brush. It's like a one or a zero, pretty thin. And some black paint. And it really has been so long since I've painted myself and talked in a video, it's like I, I can tell, you know, it's like you feel out of practice. Um, it's just been absolutely forever. All right, so I wanna do some cracks. So I'm gonna drag and then push and pull. The beauty of doing it with this brush is that it is hard to control. So it does a lot of the work for you. So I'm going to pull up from all of my lines and kind of end points. So from this point, and I'm gonna wiggle, see how it loses control. And then I'm gonna pull, and I'm gonna wiggle and pull down. I love that shape. You can also just take the tip and flick. We want some irregular, kind of creepy, bleedy shapes. So here, I'm gonna skate on the tip, push down and pull. Do the same thing. Don't worry about overlapping. I'm gonna do the same thing from this kind of inside corner of the eye. I'm just gonna trace this little line so it's darker. And I'm gonna push and pull and drag. You can do as much of that as you want. We're gonna do the same thing around the teeth, but I'm gonna do some outlining as well. Trying to think what other questions I've gotten from people. I seem to be getting a ton of messages from new face painters, which is awesome. Means that a lot of people are starting face painting businesses and face painting has really come back since COVID. You know, for a while there, our industry took a pretty deep dive pretty quickly. So that was odd. And then I feel like even certain areas that started back up, people were so paranoid about face painting that a lot of people just abandoned their business. Um, I am in a much smaller community, so we were some of the first people to start back up again. And I will never forget that first event I had on <laughs> a mask and one of the plastic 
you know, cover. So I was, my mouth was covered with a face painting or with a, you know, COVID-19 face mask, one of the cloth ones. And then I had on one of those face shields. That's what it's called. A face shield and it was October-ish and it was cold. And what I didn't realize is having that mask on and the face shield made it so that like I couldn't take a drink of water. Like it was a busy event, I do it every year. And normally I have water next to me and in between kids, I'm taking a sip of water or something. This was like five hours of me having all this, you know, gear on and I couldn't stop long enough to like remove my mask safely and like have a drink of water. So I just like pushed through by the end of this event, I was so thirsty and so uncomfortable. And I remember thinking like, if this is what I have to do to face paint, like I don't need to face paint. I will just wait until like it's okay again. And oddly enough or lucky enough, um, that was kind of one of those events where, or kind of like, I would say one of the first events that people were kind of like back at it. And then there was unfortunately like another little wave of COVID. So all the events stopped again. But I remember thinking to myself, like, this is not conducive to a healthy, you know, working environment, nor did it feel good like it was just torturous I hated it so I kind of was glad when things shut down again and that I just had to wait until things were really more safe and under control because it was not comfortable I also realized and I, I'm not one who was particularly like nervous or scared about COVID I took it seriously but not to the point where I have conditions that I needed to worry about. Um, but I also found myself just thinking that it wasn't quite a good idea yet. Like I should not have been painting, you know? That feeling where you kind of feel like, why am I here? Like the rest of the world is like basically shut down and what am I doing here kind of a thing. So, you know lessons learned and hopefully it will be the only pandemic I ever have to navigate as a face painter. All right, so this is what we're looking like so far, kind of pretty goth, I would say. So I definitely want to bring the sides together a little bit more so it's more cohesive. I want to do some line work in the butterfly to bring some of the dark creepy into the butterfly and then I want to bring some kind of butterfly element to the skull side as well so, so it doesn't look like two completely different designs but like it's more intentional and that it was designed together. So first I'm going to just do few more little cracks. Emphasize that. Go make this a little messy around the eye socket. right down it's always hard to talk and paint when you're on the side of your face or when you're doing your mouth. Always a little bit of a challenge. All 
All right, so let's get some detail over here in our butterfly wing. So even though I haven't done a ton of videos, I still have face painted a lot. Once we got through the worst like two waves of the pandemic, uh, my business has just been booming. I mean, I face paint almost every weekend, if not multiple times a weekend. This summer I got more into and kind of back into the festival gigs. Did some adult festivals, which was so much fun. I hadn't painted that many adults in many years, so that was an absolute joy. So I've had a really great couple of years and, you know, I would say the state that I'm in, we don't have a ton of face painters. So I get a lot of requests for parties, more that I have to turn down that I can accept, which is a good problem to have, but every time someone talks about face painting or mentions it at a gig, I'm like constantly telling people like, yes, yeah, start face painting, we need more face painters. So it's a good problem to have when you wanna get booked, but I feel like there's just not enough people to cover the business that we have. So I've been really, really busy. I have the most amazing clientele ever. I still do, I would say, oh, like 70% of my business is small birthday parties and then the rest is corporate gigs. Although this summer corporate gigs might have started to get more like 50% of my time and my business. Um, they did start to pick up a little bit, but they're starting to die down. I had my last big event a few weeks ago and tomorrow night I will paint the last run of holiday party people. I had a couple clients last weekend that kind of like the early party crowd that did Halloween parties mid-month and then tomorrow is kind of like the big party night. So I have a few people to paint tomorrow night and Actually, they're both butterflies. The one girl wanted kind of like a goth butterfly thing. And then um, the other client I have coming wants a UV butterfly. So, you know, my favorite thing. So yay for me. So just a couple people tomorrow night. I usually always get a few last minute people that beg me to do something because they either realize they can't get the makeup last minute or that they don't want to do it or something. So we'll see. Usually, and I always tell people I can usually squeeze them in because I just set up in my living room and then let people come to me so I'm not running around. But um, besides that, I have mainly birthday parties lined up. I only have one holiday, like Christmas gig so far. It is like a corporate event. Sorry, I have to be careful to talk when I'm in the corner of my eye there, trying to get it together. Okay, how's that look? I think that looks pretty creepy and fun. I'm digging it. I'm liking all the little round, rounded off segments. For the butterfly, it's adding some much needed interest. I'm trying to think what else to tell you guys. Um, I haven't gone live on YouTube. I used to do uh, Facebook Lives with my friend um, Noelle. Her and I would do uh, lives every now and then on Facebook. 
So I could start doing those on YouTube if you guys want to do like live question and answers or something like that. But please do tell me what videos you want to see. I want to do a little flick right there. Press and a flick. Yep, kind of like that. I love doing designs like this because you kind of never know what you're going to get and what you're going to do. And I find that to be fun. It can also be intimidating, but I quite enjoy it. All right. So I want to add some lines. on this side too, but I still want to add an element of a butterfly. So I need to think how to do that. I'm thinking maybe just like a little bit of a butterfly wing coming off of the eye. Let's try that. And I think I'll use the smaller brush. This is like one of my favorite brushes ever by Marcella Bustamante. It's the half inch long. If you do not have this brush, oh my gosh, I used this brush like crazy this summer for butterflies. It was my go-to, have to have. I think at one point in my kit and my craft and go, I couldn't find it. And I was like, where is it? Where is that brush? I was like freaking out until I found it. And it was just buried, but oh my gosh, I love, 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 love this brush. If you have not tried it, you have to try it. All right, so I think I'm gonna do, so I could give you guys a paint update. I still use a ton of Fusion, always love Leanne's collection. I am obsessed with the Fusion solids specifically the neons. Um, really, really, really love fusion neons. Like, I go nuts for them. So I have to have those all the time. Uh, I've been using fusion black and white as well, but I also use the Silly Farm Fab paint, which I believe is Superstar paint, um, which I like very much. So I like Superstar. I have some of that as well as I have some Diamond Effects paint that I use. Um, I really like uh, Susie Amaro's collection of paint, and that is for, through Silly Farm, so that's Fab Paint. I just love that collection, and I feel like I had that, like, a similar idea. I was like, oh, I just want a whole range with, like, a little bit of a black outline, and when I saw her do that, I was like, yes, you read my mind. It is what the face painting community needed so she is amazing and I absolutely love that whole concept and if I had to like redo my kit next week from scratch and I had nothing I would just buy like her entire collection. I feel like that would just round out everything you could possibly need for paint. So I love that. Um, I'm always a Diamond Effects fan. I still like Global Paint a lot. Uh, so I use all sorts of stuff. I love my star blends. I love my, my, my bleh, Mayron star blends. Solids of all kinds are amazing. All right, so now I'm gonna go back into my custom one stroke. I have started making more custom one strokes, especially because if you guys are actively face painting and you've tried to purchase stuff lately, you'll notice a lot of stuff has been out of stock, which is super frustrating. And I have to have certain combinations. Um, I get very annoyed when I can't have like 
my go-tos. So I started making versions of my go-tos as well as some just like a little bit different custom split cakes. I also have a, a kind of pink corally split that I made that I really like. So it's fun to, to make your own cakes. All right, what do we think? Is it enough of a butterfly element to get the idea across that these are the same? Let's add a little bit more definition. It. I am going to segment it out a little bit to take it down so it's not too bright. So those are the paints I'm using, making a lot of my own custom splits. And let's see, I did get a mini craft and go right before they sold to the new owners, um, which I'm really happy for them that they found someone to buy that company because it's really an amazing product. I don't think there's anything on the market quite like it. So I love my mini. I thought I was going to use it for paint. But I ended up actually turning it into a glitter bar this summer because I had so many festivals to do for like adults and I knew I was going to be doing a lot of body glitter so I really stocked up on my glitter and then I turned it completely into like a mini bling station and I love it like that so much that I have just been dragging two Craft and Goes to all of my gigs, which was not what I intended at all. I intended to like pare down my like birthday party face paint because I don't need to be taking a full Craft and Go to birthday parties. Um, and I still don't need to be doing that, but instead of like doing what I intended, I just kind of so far have kept it as a glitter station. We'll see how long that lasts because one thing I've noticed with like birthday parties, for some reason, if it's like an hour long birthday party, there's only like six kids there. The party's always in the basement. So I am carrying my larger craft and go down flights of stairs. You know, first I have to get it into the house, then down basement stairs and back up. And it is so not worth doing that for six kids. I mean, half the time it takes me like 40 minutes to paint kids and then I'm schlepping my stuff back upstairs. So not super ideal. So I'll probably, you know, at some point, get back to the intended use of what I meant to do with that mini, but I really, really do like it as a, as a glitter glam bar. Unfortunately, I kind of think I need another one, <laughs> which would be awesome, but not sure I'm gonna make that investment right now, but we'll see, you never know. All right, so I'm just gonna add some more details and round out this design and make sure I feel like it looks relatively complete. I want my nose to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to dry brush, some black 
paint on my nose and I'm going to grab my tiny brush again go right up Too, a little bit just because I don't want it to end in like a perfect round right there I'd rather it look more hollow when you're looking straight on alright so I'm just gonna finish adding in some more black details and then I'll probably move to some highlight and decide if I want glitter and then add some liner and lips. Um, I love doing Halloween looks like this because then I can wear regular clothes. So I just put on like a black bodysuit to do this look. So I would absolutely do this and put on a leather jacket and some pants and some heels and go out on the town. Like this is my jam for Halloween. I don't love costumes and quite frankly, I never have. The first time I remember painting my face, I think I was like 16 years old and <laughs> I went to a work Halloween party. I worked at an art company at the time. So we were all very like artsy and um, had these kind of like creative self made costumes. So I went as Mother Nature. I took acrylic paint because at the art company we had acrylic paint. That's what we used to to hand paint furniture. And I painted my face blue and I stippled white clouds all over my face and then I went outside and I shoved branches in my like curly teased hair and like leaves and I went as Mother Nature. And that is the first time I remember painting my face. So I have been painting my face since I was 16 years old. And then the next year I painted my face too. Like that became a thing that I did. Only I was doing it with acrylic paint because I didn't know any better, you know? And none of us did back then. I mean, I'm 40 now. Like that was, that was a long time ago. And the first, I don't know if I've ever I think I've talked about it on this channel, but the first gig I ever did was a volunteer gig. One of my friends was running an organization here in town and asked if uh, me and a few other friends would face paint and just volunteer and help out. So we said yes, of course, and we all made palettes of acrylic paint and went and painted icons, not full face, but just little icons, hearts, and stars and stuff on kids' faces. We didn't know. You know, we had no idea. And it wasn't until uh, people started trying to hire me to face paint uh, at that volunteer gig that I looked into face painting and I realized that there was actual face paint that you could use. And that, you know, using uh, acrylic paint on kids' faces wasn't good. But I had no idea. And if you've been around or in this industry for a while, You'll actually hear a lot of professional face painters say that that's how they got their start because, you know, you don't know until you know. So, you know, you know better, do better. Is that the, is that the saying? So yeah, hopefully and luckily we were just doing small enough things on kids' cheeks that nobody had any reactions or issues, but definitely not safe and would not recommend uh, doing that but I know it still happens too I like many of us will find myself at like a craft fair or very often school events you know um, I will see them using something on kids faces where I am like oh my gosh what are they using uh, the most brilliant thing that happened which I think is really funny is one year at uh, Billy's school, who's my daughter, who's been on this channel a bunch of times, you guys probably know that, uh, they were doing face paint in one of the rooms, and she was young. She 
gosh, it had to be like four or five years ago because it was before the pandemic. Uh, so she was quite young, maybe, maybe first grade. And we go into the room and she looked at the bottle and went, oh no, that's not real face paint. I'm not getting face paint, mom. You shouldn't, we, we shouldn't put that on our faces. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like how funny is that? Like even Billy knows what's good for your face and what you shouldn't put on your face. And I loved that she had the, you know, uh, knowledge not to allow somebody to paint her face with something that probably wasn't safe, but everybody makes mistakes. I know I certainly did, and I'm still not above mistakes, you know? I, I learn stuff all the time as a professional face painter of things I could be doing better or things that are a bit more safe or better for the environment or all sorts of stuff. So, you know, we're all human, just here to learn. All right, I'm liking the highlights. I'm debating whether I wanna add additional glitter to any of this. I just have the little bit of glitter on my eye there. Um, hmm. I think I'll do a little highlight on my nose. I'm just going to tap out the bottom of that so it's not too stark. shadow brush here. I'm just going to go over my eye with the star blends. I'm going to brush it into my eye. I'm going to do a little bit of shadow on my butterfly side just so I have some depth there in the corner of the eye. Oh yeah, I like that. It's kind of darkened it up a little bit. So I will send my client this little trial run. Uh, I don't always do this. I don't always face paint myself when I no, I have a client coming over, but I thought this would be a fun thing to do. And this way now she can see it and tell me if this is what she had in mind or if she wants to pivot a little bit. But this is my favorite thing to do. It's kind of like a glam, fun makeup look for Halloween and then I don't have to buy any outfits. I just wear my black clothes because black is my signature cloth color anyway, so I have plenty of it. All right, so I'm going to do, oh, I think it looks good. I'm looking in the viewfinder, I know, so don't get mad at me and tell me that I'm not looking in the camera lens all the time. Um, people always get annoyed by that. And in the beginning when I started my YouTube channel, if you watch way back, which please don't watch way back, but if you do, <laughs> I always looked in the viewfinder because it's your face, right? So like if you ever film a video, it's just so natural to look at yourself and talk to yourself. And it's not because like people are so narcissistic that they just have to look at themselves. It just seems natural even though it's not natural on camera. And I'm a broadcasting major and I still made that huge mistake and make that mistake all the time. I just want to, you know, talk to myself in the camera, even though I know better. All right, so I am going to darken up my lash line, and you could 
absolutely and should put on false lashes for this. I do think I have some upstairs. I'm downstairs in my studio, but I'm not going to put on lashes because I'm not actually going out tonight, but I'm going to get that lash line nice and darkened up. And I don't really think I need glitter. Maybe we'll put glitter on right at the end and have like a before and after glitter effect. Okay, so lips. I do want to put lipstick on. I know I've used this in a video before. I don't know that I'm going to use it. I think I might use some of my regular lipstick. But if you have Halloween clients and you want to put lipstick on them and you want it to not move, Lip Sense is amazing. This stuff does not budge. You can wipe at it, smudge at it, and it will not go anywhere. You can also, what you do is you put it on in layers. I know I've done it in another video, or just look up Lip Sense videos on YouTube, and you will get a rabbit hole of this stuff. Um, but anyways, you can buy this. It's an alcohol-based lipstick, and it adheres to the lip. And then you can get little tiny samples of the gloss. You put it on your client and then you send them with a sample of the gloss and you don't have to send the lipstick with them, but it stays on so well. And it stays on so well that I don't want to even have to bother trying to remove it tonight since I'm not going anywhere. So I'm just going to grab a regular lipstick. So I think I'm just going to use red because that's classic. And... So I absolutely should have put lipstick on before I even painted. I should have put lipstick on and then painted over it, but you can't really tell that much. So I'm just gonna fill in a little bit. Yep, lipstick always, always helps. And I love a red lip anyways. It's like my favorite thing. So it's always it's one of my go-tos. But we can add just a little bit of pink in the center just because we're extra all right so now just for some final little details this is kind of at that point where you want to add more details go for it but don't really need to so it's all a matter of time. Usually I schedule my private appointments for Halloween with a decent amount of wiggle room and I also price out my private appointments differently depending on what it is. Like little kid costume face paint I do pretty cheaply especially if they're gonna come to my house because my house is just kind of like a rolling you know, door on Halloween night, you know, kids in and out getting painted and adults. So it can be anywhere from like five or 10 bucks for kids face paint, like similar to what I would do at just a festival kind of low end, uh, $20 probably on average. And then for adults, I would probably usually start around, I would say lowest end $30, which is not very likely, um, more likely $50, and then up to 100 and more, depending on if I'm doing any kind of special effects stuff or if I'm doing anything like really crazy and detailed. So it varies uh, a lot, but I also tend to charge less if they're coming to my house in the past and I think I only went to one person's house that was this last weekend um, so far this year in the past I've gone to someone's house and painted a bunch of people and I charged them more along the lines of like uh, a little over a hundred dollars an hour so it really varies a ton um, I always tell people you know price it out so that you know at the end of the night you're not gonna regret it so what is your time worth to you and very often, like, I enjoy it so much and I'm having fun that I'm not as worried about that. I just want to make sure everybody gets what they want. 
and that I have enough time to paint everyone. So that's usually what my main concern is. So, all right, so I am fluffing the hair. I think it's cool. What do you guys think? Do you like it? I think it's fun and it was pretty easy. It'll be way faster on someone else. Uh, none of this is very hard. The technique is super easy. You can change it up with a bunch of colors. You can make the skull more realistic. This is not very realistic. It's more kind of loose, cartoony. Um, you know, the teeth are big. They're not trying to be realistic. It's more impactful than it is scary and realistic, I would say. So, I don't know. You guys like it? I think I kind of dig it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And it was nice to film a video for you guys. I really hope that you follow along with me and that you comment down below. Let me know how you are doing. How's your business going? What is life like after the pandemic? And what videos do you want to see? I'm excited to get back into making videos. I feel a little bit more recharged and ready to do that. So please comment down below and let me know what you think. I do think I'm gonna add some glitter onto this. I'm gonna get some pictures and then add some glitter and then you guys can tell me which version you like. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Okay, it's a lot and it's maybe a bit much, but I also kind of love it. So I think it depends on the client. You know, like I love it both ways, but if you're going out and you're trying to make a statement, I mean, glitter always does it. I'm also being kind of heavy handed and sloppy because I'm not using glue, I'm using gel. So if I spread out the glitter, it's just going to totally melt this design off. So I'm just kind of like plopping it around. And I think it's kind of fabulous. So there's the design with chunky glitter. It's your little bonus at the end. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you soon.